Hi folks, this is the third video in the series that follows this strange vocalization that was recorded in the early morning hours of July the 19th of 2021 in the Shawamigan National Forest in northern Wisconsin. I can promise you that this is no hoax, and I'll go to my deathbed on that stance, take any polygraph to that end, etc., etc., I was not present during the recording, and I hid my recorder in a small log with a hole that I drilled in it, just big enough so that the recorder would fit snugly in the hole to where it would not fall out when positioned upside down. It was then hung from a tree branch about 11 feet in the air. The location was not random. It was identified as a potential area of interest in the last all-clear alert survey that I conducted in the summer of 21. That location is known to me as L-79. L-79's all-clear alert and the corresponding view of the spot can be seen in my video All-Clear Alert Surveys 5 and 6. The spectrogram of the all-clear alert begins at around the 11.30 mark of that video with footage of the spot to follow. The peculiar sounds heard there were what prompted me to leave an overnight audio at that location. So when I say the spot was not randomly chosen, that's the explanation as to why. So if you want to see what that spot looks like, open up another window in your browser and sidestep over there. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. I've been round and round with how I should go about this video for a while now. Should I spend half a year researching phonology, vowel formats, etc. just to make myself sound like I know what I'm talking about? Or should I just make some vowel measurements in just text form with no verbal explanation as to what's going on? I think both would be a mistake. I need to Goldilocks this thing. I'm going to grassroots explain things to my level of expertise in the subject, which is very, very low. I'm going to be blatantly honest about that. I want that caveat to be at the forefront. A good percentage of you viewers to this point will have one of two pieces to this puzzle. Most of you who will have one of the pieces will be my most loyal subscribers who have been following my channel and are up to speed with this four syllable utterance, but have no idea what a formant is, phonology, diphthongs, monothongs, phonemes, etc., etc. And the second group of you puzzle piece holders do know what those terms are, and you probably stumbled upon this video based upon my usage of the words prot, vowels, and formants in the title but are baffled as to what could be articulating this incredible deep low utterance. <laughs> to this group, I strongly recommend that you stick around to the end because it's you folks who I'm really trying to reach out to. My end game is collaboration with one or more of you professional types in the field of phonology. Being able to definitively say that this articulated utterance is or is not made by a human is not within my skill set. My strength is in the field, tracking this lost tribe of people down by using audio traps in strategic locations to better understand where they are, and use specific techniques to filter through hundreds of hours of worthless audio to identify significant sounds. Fifty plus years of outdoor experience in the woods of northern Wisconsin is my primary lens I use when using the process of elimination to determine if a sound is known or unknown. It's the best I can offer. My goal for this video is that everyone who sticks around to the end will have both pieces of the puzzle. But all that will get you folks is better questions, I'm afraid. If you go back to videos where I posted the raw capture, you know, the one with the all black thumbnail, 
with a good pair of headphones, you can hear the four-syllable utterance under the squawk from a juvenile raven. I was not present at the time of the recording, but I've heard juvenile ravens do this back and forth squawking countless times before, and it doesn't ever get any less annoying. The real unfortunate thing is that one of the squawks happened right over the third syllable of the utterance. On the bright side, though, the squawk had a higher frequency than the first two formats of the utterance, which did allow me to remove the squawk without touching the lower frequency formats from the utterance. I used Audacity's Spectral Edit Parametric EQ tool to remove the Raven squawk, pixel by pixel. The process took me nearly two hours. I don't have a ton of experience doing this sort of thing, and I'm actually surprised how well it turned out. In the description below, I will leave a long list of links that I used when researching for this video. I'd be doing you a great disservice by trying to explain formants, diphthongs, vowel structure, or anything else having to do with speech science in detail, so please indulge if you feel so inclined. I will dabble only with the terminology that specifically pertains to what I've got going on here. So please take that into consideration before you attack. I make no claims on being an expert with phonology. The best thing I think I can do is just take some simple vowel measurements with a new software program I'm using. It's called Prot and it's a free computer software package for speech analysis and phonetics. It was designed and continues to be developed by Paul Biersma and David Wienink of the University of Amsterdam. The program supports speech synthesis, including articulatory synthesis. I still use Audacity to screen through the long files I record, chopping, noise reduction, etc., I'll still use Audacity for everything else, but when I want to measure speech with precision, Prot is the way to go. I was tipped off to Prot by an anonymous source. I'm guessing he or she is a professional in the field of phonology. So I want to say thank you to whomever you are. From this point on, I'm going to assume that you have, or you will eventually, after watching this video, get up to speed with the basic terminology that I'm going to use. The links are in the description below, like I said. Okay, now that we've got those pleasantries out of the way, let's dive in here. For this section, it's not as important to accurately identify the exact vowels being uttered here. It's more important to just measure the formats at the center of each. Then the actual vowel identifications can be somewhat subjective with the format measurements helping to that end. For this first vowel, I'm going to estimate the center. Remember that I should measure from the center of the vowel to be as far away from any potential consonant as possible. Only the first two formats will be measured here, and they will be denoted as F1 and F2. First, let me show you a neat little trick that Prot has. In the Format tab, I can enable Show Formats. Then the spectrogram is populated with these little dots that try to map the peaks of each format like a trail of breadcrumbs. Here I've zoomed in so that I can work this better. And now that I've estimated the center of this first vowel, say between here and here, I can just put my cursor right over the beginning of that section on the spectrogram. Then click and drag to the end of the section that I want to measure. Again, I'm being careful to estimate the center. Then I go up to the Formats tab again and click on Get First Format, which is roughly around 905 Hz. Now Prot is known for its insanely overly precise measurements. We're just going to round this first one to around 905 Hz. Then the F2 of that same section is at 1515 Hz. Then it's off to the second utterance, which appears to be a diphthong, as in, hey. I'll be doing a follow-up on this in the next section, but for now, 
the best way to measure a depth song is to grab the first part, the high part of the hey, hey, the he. More on that, like I said, in the next section. So the first format of the second vowel measures out to 1124 hertz. And the second taps out at 1820. The third vowel, the most distinctive of the lot, in my opinion, the woo utterance, has a first format of 801 hertz and a second at 1565 hertz. Also worth noting is the W in the woo is, in my opinion, the only time I can make out a consonant within the entire four-syllable utterance. More on that in the next segment, like I said. And finally, the fourth vowel has a first format of around 989 hertz and a second of around 1626. Now before I put these to a chart, I thought I'd do some measurements in my own voice. Hi, hey, woo, yeah. Hi, hey, woo, yeah. Hi, hey, woo, yeah. I'll save some time by not going into a 20-minute spiel about previous research on what human male formats should be with any particular vowel, and just offer to you that my voice is within normal human parameters. I voice these with my best guess as to what vowels are being uttered, so take that with a big grain of salt. Here's a quick once-over of those measurements. So here's the chart where I graph out the format comparisons for me in the green and our unknown force being in the red. Not a lot I can draw from this other than we can all see a consistent difference between the red and the green. They are not randomly mixed on the graph. Generally speaking, both formats were of a higher frequency with our unknown force being than they were with yours truly. Was it because I was borderline whispering into the mic with a much lower volume? The unknown utterance seemed to have some reverberation to it, indicating it was some distance from my recorder, and therefore the actual volume of its utterances would be considerably greater than my own. Does increasing the volume of your voice affect where your formants graph? I tried to get the pitch of my voice to be close to the pitch of our unknown, and in doing so, I had to reduce the volume of my voice. Like I said before, I do not have the skill set to explain what these mean, so I'm just going to plop these down here and hope that someone who actually knows a thing or two about phonology leaves a comment below. I'd like to direct your attention to this little area right in here. See how the spectrogram does a little left to right downward dip? This is the second vowel in the utterance, which is a diphthong. A diphthong, as opposed to a monothong, is a vowel that is a combination of two separate vowel sounds. In this case, it's the most common diphthong in the English language, denoted as EI, as in hey or bay or say. It involves the upward movement of the tongue to complete the vowel, and as it turns out, there is an inverse relationship between the height of the tongue and the first format. The higher the tongue, the lower the frequency will be for the first format. So in our spectrogram, that drop we see here in the first format of the diphthong is the result of the tongue lifting to complete the spoken vowel, hey. Here's my voice in Pratt saying the same vowel that I'm guessing our unknown is uttering. Hi, hey, woo, yeah. Hey, 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 woo. See the same left to right descent of the first format? And here's the graph that compares my F1 movement through the two parts of the diphthong. 
to that of our unknown. Of the four syllables in this utterance, how the second leads into the third is by far the most interesting with its hey woo transition. The first and fourth seem to be little more than basic guttural vocalizations. Maybe they are fillers, like um, ah, uh, or like, or maybe the first and last utterance of any spoken communication in their language are marked with these fillers to denote start and finish. Also worth noting is how utterance number four drops in pitch, much like we humans do when finishing a sentence. Anyways, we could spend hours talking about the similarities between utterances 1 and 4, but that's going to have to be for another video. I do think I'm going to do another video on this capture, mostly discussion stuff really. There are some situational factors that must be addressed, much more interesting than this stuff. So if you've made it to this point in the video and you're still awake, I commend you and thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. Click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video.